Mindful Life Practice Community. So as I, you know, said, you are absolutely invited to get started in any pose that you like. I'm going to get started today in a child's pose because this allows me to really start to get centered and start to, it's a good space for me um, to be able to assess my, my energy, the things that I may be feeling in my body. And so if you don't already have a favorite starting shape, this one might be the one for you as well. Feel free to make this a um, passive pose, just allowing the hips to fall towards the, the feet, maybe bringing the toes in to touch, knees wide on the mat, just in case this is not a familiar pose for you. And then today I'm choosing to bring a block underneath my forehead just to give me some, some space between my upper body and the floor. And whatever shape you've chosen, just give yourself a few rounds of breath just to start centering in on you. Maybe start first by noticing the sounds that are occurring in your environment. And then bring your awareness closer to your physical body. Maybe starting first with just paying attention to each in-breath and each out-breath. Maybe doing a quick scan of your body from head to toe, just noticing any areas where you may be holding on to tension, especially if you are walking away for a few minutes from a life that is causing some stress. A lot of people like to hold, and I say like for lack of a better word, hold tension and stress in their shoulders or the hips. And so just take a, a quick second to notice that. And definitely take another breath or two to notice the energy that you are bringing with you onto your mat this morning or this afternoon. Maybe setting an intention um, to pay attention to that energy as you focus on whatever body part or movement um, you may be choosing to focus on today as well. Take three more rounds of breath, just as you are. And then let's take three more rounds that are intentionally just a little bit deeper. Maybe working to fill the entire upper body with breath on the inhale. And maybe opening your mouth and sighing it all out on the exhale, allowing your body to get heavy. And take two more just like that. And then at the bottom of the next exhale, if you're not already in a child's pose, if you would, in any way that makes sense for you, find a uh, a really mindful way to come into a child's pose with us. And if you're already in a child's pose, just start to maybe make some subtle movements. And so maybe pushing each finger pad one by one into the mat, just starting to connect some, some mindfulness and some movement maybe starting to wiggle the toes in the shape that you're in or shift the hips from side to side. And then let's make this a little more active by coming up onto the fingertips and starting to walk the fingertips forward, allowing the head to raise if that gives you the space to do so. And walking the fingertips forward while you send the hips back in space and just to start to get a little stretch along the back of the the body and the shoulders and the upper arms.
And then at the bottom of the next exhale, can you walk your hands back towards um, your hips and walk your knees in towards each other. And let's come into this tabletop shape. And tabletop, check to see where your shoulders are in alignment with your wrists. Shoulders may be stacked over your wrists to give you lots of stability. Maybe your fingertips or fingers are spread out a little wide or maybe they're a little closer together. Just kind of play with um, the position and notice what offers you the most stability. Hips may be stacked over your knees and notice whether or not your toes are tucked or whether your feet are flat on the mat. Let's take a few rounds of breath here, just in stillness. Maybe noticing the sensation of your body touching the mat or any muscles that may be engaging to hold you in this shape. And being thankful that you have those body parts to do what it is that they're doing right now. Even though sometimes it may seem like they're not doing much at all. And then when you're ready, let's drop the belly down towards the mat as we start to engage in some cat-cow movements. Let's make the first couple of rounds of cat and cow nice and slow so that you can feel every bit of the articulation of your spine as it works to move in these two directions. Maybe even pausing in any areas that feel good or feel like they could um, benefit from some additional time in that shape. And then take a few more rounds in any way that suits you. So maybe speeding it up, maybe keeping the same pace that you had. And one more. And then come to stillness in your tabletop. Let's take the left hand and move it towards the center of the mat right underneath your eye gaze. Planning all of your weight into that left hand, maybe keeping a small bend in your left elbow and then lift and twist the right arm up towards the sky. On the next exhale, let's bring that hand down and around underneath the armpit. And we're gonna bring the right shoulder down to the mat. I try not to lay on my headset. Maybe keep your left hand right next to your face where it was, or maybe try extending the left hand long, coming up onto the fingertips like we did when we were in the child's pose. Right hand is face up towards the ceiling. Maybe try wiggling the fingers just to make sure they still move. And to make sure that you're not constricted in any way that's preventing movement. And stay here, maybe float the left hand up and behind you, bringing the back of the hand to the right hip crease. And then just subtly working to open the left shoulder towards the right side of the mat. I'm just noticing how that feels. If you chose to take that bind, take one more round of breath right there. And then release the left hand forward. I'm just stretching it, walking it forward one more time. Before you bring that left hand back in towards its original spot, and then turn and lift the right hand up towards the sky one more time for another twist on the side. Exhale to lower the right hand to replace the left. So the right hand is right underneath your eye gaze and this time we'll turn and lift the left hand up towards the ceiling for a twist. Just noticing all the different directions that our spine can go. Let's exhale and bring the left hand and arm underneath the right armpit and bring the left side of the head down to the mat. Maybe walking that right arm forward for a breath or two. And then you may decide to leave that hand there or float the right hand up and behind you, bringing the back of the hand to the left hip crease 
and subtly starting to open the right shoulder up towards the, it'll feel like the left side of the mat. And one more round of breath there. And if you took that bind, release the right arm forward, coming up onto the fingertips one more time before sliding that right hand back underneath the face and inhaling to lift the left hand up towards the ceiling. And exhale, bring it back down to the mat. Here, let's take a couple more cat cows and maybe they're a little faster this time and maybe they're exactly the same as they were the first time. And maybe take a moment to take some other movements that may feel organic to you in this moment, like shifting your hips from side to side. And then come to stillness in this tabletop. Let's walk the hands forward about one hand's distance so that we're in um, a modified knee plank. Tuck the toes and let's stay here for two breaths, engaging the core. And that may feel like pulling your lower belly up and in or in and up. And pulling your elbows in towards your body will lower all the way down to the mat, allowing the chest to land, and then maybe starting to slide the hips back as you straighten the legs. <clears throat> Palms are flat on the mat, and you slide your, your hands so that they're underneath your shoulders. Chest is slightly lifted, and then lower, forehead touches the mat. Inhale, head and chest lift. Maybe you feel a tiny back bend here. Exhale to lower chest and head come to the mat. One more time, just like that. And stay here. Or if you'd like a little more, maybe you straighten the arms, maybe keeping a little bend. <clears throat> and maybe even lift the upper thighs off the mat. Gaze is forward. Exhale, lower the thighs, start to bend the elbow, bring torso and forehead back down to the mat. From here, let's tuck the toes, push down through both hands and push yourself up through tabletop and allow the hips to go back towards the heel. Bring your head down to the mat. Two rounds of breath here knowing that you can spread your knees wide if you need to give yourself a little bit more space. And two rounds of breath. One more. At the bottom of the next exhale, shift yourself forward and coming back into knee plank. At the bottom of the next inhale, bend at the elbow, lower all the way down to the mat. Bring the tops of the feet down to the mat, push down through both hands, head and chest lift off the mat for baby cobra or straighten the arms for up dog. Exhale, bring everything down to the mat, tuck the toes and push the hips back towards the heels in three rounds of breath. And we'll take that one more time, just like that. So inhale to shift forward for plank. This time, if you'd like, maybe even lift your knees off and take full plank. Exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Inhale head and chest lift, or arm straighten for up dog. Exhale, all the way down to the mat. Tuck your toes, push yourself back. If you're going into child's pose, forehead down, three rounds of breath.
when you're ready. Shift yourself back up so that you're in table position. From here, if your toes are not already tucked, go ahead and tuck them. Check to see that your shoulders are stacked over your wrists, hips over your knees, fingers spread wide. And then we'll push down into the toes and lift our hips up and back for downward facing dog. Feel free to take this downward facing dog in stillness or in movement. Maybe keeping a, a really generous bend in your knees. Maybe pedaling the left foot and then the right foot, sending each heel down towards the mat. Maybe reaching, probably not. I'm just going through the motions energetically. Maybe shifting forwards and backwards, sending your torso a little bit closer to your thighs. I'll take one more round of breath, just like that. And then come to stillness if you're moving. And then when you're ready, let's begin to walk the hands back towards the feet. Holding here in this forward fold. Again, keeping your knees bent to alleviate any sensation that is too much, but play with it. Maybe bend the knees and straighten the legs, maybe alternating left and right. And perhaps you hang here like a rag doll, maybe fingertips touch, or you may lift the fingers to cradle the elbows. <sighs> Remembering to breathe in any way that makes sense for you. And you may stay here in stillness or you may decide that it might feel good to sway from side to side. One more round of breath and whatever you've selected. And then come to stillness here in the middle. Release the elbows if you have them. And let's inhale to lift up halfway. So we'll come to a flat back, sitting on the top of the head towards the top of the mat. Maybe your palms rest on your shins. And then let's exhale and release the pose into a forward fold. Maybe take in any wiggles that might feel good. Let's inhale to lift up halfway. And exhale to fold. One more time, just like that. Inhale to lift. And sigh it all out and fold. This time we'll rise all the way up to standing, keeping a bend in your knee, planting your feet as firmly as you can and pushing down through as much of your foot as you can. And then slowly, Slowly, slowly rise all the way up to standing, allowing your head to be the last thing to come up. Just giving yourself a moment here at the top in the event that your body needs to adjust to this new orientation. Eyes may be closed, they may be open, or they may be slowly or softly lowered towards the floor. They're open, try to find a spot on the wall in front of you that's not moving. Two more rounds of breath. And then after the next round, can you make your exhale really audible? Like anything that you were holding on to can be released with just the sound of that sigh. <sighs> yes, and if that felt good, do it again. And do it as many times as you need to throughout the rest of this practice. As you stand here in this mountain pose, allow your shoulders to be heavy as they sink down towards the floor. Maybe your palms are facing forward. And then getting really stable through your feet. Can you pull 
your your the front of your leg muscles, your quads up to towards the sky. If you notice that your ribs wanted to move towards the the front of the room where you're looking, can you bring them down a little bit? two more rounds of breath just in stillness just noticing what effort it takes for you to stand here in stillness and you may be swaying from side to side and trying to make that not happen and just appreciating the fact that you have whatever you need to in order to notice that and to accomplish that The bottom of the next exhale, let's inhale and lift the fingertips up towards the sky. And then we'll bring the palms to touch and down through heart center and we'll follow the hands down towards the floor. From here, let's inhale to lift up halfway and exhale to fold. And we'll inhale to rise all the way up to standing, fingertips towards the ceiling and exhale, hands down to heart center and down by your side. And we'll take that four more times. So inhale to lift, exhale to fold. Inhale to rise up halfway, exhale to fold. Inhale to rise all the way up through standing. Exhale, hands down to heart center and down by your side three more times on your own breath. And so if that means that you do it a little bit faster, then you do it a little bit faster. If that means that you take it a little bit slower, slower, more slowly, then you take it a little bit more slowly. If that means that you missed a transi transition, but you did something that made sense for your body, do that. But I will inhale to lift and exhale to fold all the way down inhale halfway and exhale to fold before rising all the way back up through standing and exhaling hands to heart center and down by the side and two more times on your own breath remaining mindful as you move about everything that your body is doing to help you make it through these movements. And as you finish up, we'll meet together in our mountain pose and just take a moment to notice whatever you want to notice notice your breath notice your energy notice how you feel notice the connection of your body and the mat or the orientation of your body to something else The lot of the next exhale, let's just go ahead and release that pose and shake it out if that feels good. And then from here, let's walk slowly and mindfully up towards the top of our mat. From here, we'll plant our weight into the right foot. Let's step the left foot behind us. About one, for me, it's about one leg's distance. And try it for you. And then if you need to slide the left leg back a little bit more, um, do that as we set up for warrior two. For warrior two, the, the, the right toes are facing forward and the right knee is bent, maybe around a 90 degree, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, depending on how your body is feeling today. And the left leg is extended out and the toes are pointing towards the side of the mat. Let's inhale to lift the arms up to the side if you're facing um, the direct, the long edge of your mat or they're in front of you and behind you if you're facing forward, which I'm gonna invite you to do. Can you turn and look 
over your uh, middle finger of your right hand, maybe wiggle the fingers in the front and in the back. And can you sink a little deeper into the front leg and just notice anywhere where you may be feeling any sensation. If you're shaking, that's a really good sign that you're doing it right. <laughs> just, can you peek down and check to see whether or not your knee is starting com to come in towards the left side of your mat? And if it is, can you pull it out towards the pinky edge of your right foot? One more round of breath. And then when you're ready, can you straighten the right leg and inhale both arms up and overhead, fingertips point towards the ceiling. And then exhale, re-straighten the right knee and drop the hands warrior two. Inhale, straighten the right leg, bring the fingertips to touch, your gaze is um, off the long edge of your mat. And then let's exhale and return to warrior two. One more time, straighten the right leg, bring the fingertips up and overhead, gaze to the side. Exhale, warrior two. Let's take two complete rounds of breath here, just appreciating any sensations that you may be feeling in your legs and your arms. And then let's drop and bring the um, hands to the, the hips for just a second. Let's straighten the right leg. And then it may be beneficial to um, heel toe the back foot in just about a foot's distance. And then let's re-extend the arms in front and behind. And from here, we'll reach forward with the right hand. So from the hips, reaching forward, like we're trying to reach something um, on a dresser in front of us, but we just can't get to it. And then when you can't reach anymore, can you allow that right hand to drop, bringing the back of the hand in front of the, um, the shin, what is this, the shin? <laughs> Left hand facing up towards the ceiling. Your gaze may be anywhere from the top hand to the bottom hand. One more round of breath here. And then let's bend the front leg and then come up and out of that pose. And we'll straighten the right leg again. Let's turn the toes towards the long edge of the mat. This time both toes are pointing in the same direction. Legs are about legs distance, um, one legs distance apart which will be shorter if you're a shorter person and longer if you're a longer person. Hands are on the hips and can you reach the top of your body towards the ceiling? And when you can't reach anymore, can you start to tilt forward? <sighs> Exhale and maybe release the hands down to the mat. <sighs> Just allow the top of your body to get really heavy knowing that your hands are there to to support you. Notice how your legs feel and notice whether or not it would serve you to widen the legs or to put a bend in the knee. Just listen to whatever your body is telling you to do in this moment. And then can you take your left hand and place it right underneath your eye gaze Similar to when we did the twist on the floor, we're gonna twist here. So left hand is on the floor and let's lift the right hand, fingertips up towards the ceiling. Keeping the fingertips here or maybe bringing the hand behind the back and opening up again across the shoulders. And one more round of breath here and let's release the bind if you have it, and bring the right hand down to replace the left. This time the right hand is planted and we'll inhale and lift the left fingers up towards the ceiling. Staying here, we're bringing the left hand behind the back and over to the right side, the hip crease.
And one round of breath. And then let's release those fingertips back up towards the ceiling before bringing them down towards the mat. From here, put a bend in your knees and bring your hands up to meet your hips. And then we'll slowly pushing down through both feet, rise to standing. Just for a moment, let's just heel toe the feet in towards one another. And shake out the legs in the event that they need a little bit of a, a rest. And then maybe walking back towards the top of your mat. And then we'll take that on the right side. So planting down, but <clears throat> excuse me, into your left foot, let's step the right leg back behind us. Bending the left leg, left uh, toes are facing forward, right toes maybe facing towards the long edge of the mat or somewhere in between the top and the, and the side. And then let's lift the arms up. Let's turn the gaze over the middle finger of the left hand and sink a little deeper into that warrior two, into the front leg. If you notice that your shoulders are hunching up towards your ears, can you relax them down? Like they wanna get heavy and sink down towards the mat. The bottom of the next exhale, let's straighten the right leg and then lift the arms up towards the sky, turning our gaze off the long edge of the mat, the other side. Let's exhale to lower, warrior two. Straighten the right leg and lift the fingertips up towards the sky. Exhale to lower into warrior two. And one more time. Inhale, fingertips up towards the sky. And exhale, warrior two. Pausing here for a moment. Maybe bending a little more into the front leg, making sure that the knee is not caving in towards the right side. And then let's lower the hands to the hips, straighten the right leg, heel toe that back foot in about one foot length, and then re-extend the arms out to the side. Let's start to reach forward. And then when we can't reach anymore, just allow ourselves to tip back of the left hand coming to the front of the left shin, right fingertips pointing up towards the sky, gaze is anywhere that it wants to be. And one more round of breath here. And then to undo this pose, let's start to bend at the knee and bring ourselves back up, bringing the hand to the hips and we'll turn the toes this time to face the other long edge of the mat. I'll turn and face you. And take a breath or two here to lift and lengthen up towards the ceiling. And then when you can't lift and lengthen anymore, let's exhale and fold forward. Options here to take the same twist that we took on the other side, bringing one hand down to the mat and then reaching towards the ceiling with the other. And you can make this a dynamic movement or you can, um, where you do it a couple of different times or you can just kind of pause on one side and open up across the chest. Otherwise just staying here in this fold is totally fine. Maybe even choosing to walk the hands back to the other side of the mat and pull yourself deeper into the fold, gently. And whatever you've selected, let's choose that for three more rounds of breath. And then when you're ready, 
Walk both hands. If your hands are anywhere besides the mat, can you return them to the mat? Walk both hands so that they're just underneath your eyes. And then maybe allow your hips to shift from side to side. And then put a slight bend in your knee. Let's lift the left hand, lift the right hand back towards the hips and pushing down through both feet, slowly rise to standing. We'll heel toe the feet in towards one another and shake it out. From here, let's plant um, your uh, weight into your left foot and take the right foot and kickstand it at your ankle, shin, or inner thigh. I'm choosing my shin today. And then if you're looking forward, try to find a spot that's not moving or you will absolutely teeter-totter from side to side. And then decide what your hands wanna do. And so your hands can be down by your side and palms facing forward, like when you were in your mountain pose or you may choose to lift the fingertips up towards the sky and grow your branches. If you feel like your left hip has kicked itself out to the side, it probably has. Can you bring it back in towards midline? And on the exhale, let's bring the hands down to the hips and let's take that right knee and turn it towards the front of the mat and lift it up towards your chest as far as it'll go on its own. To release the hands from the hips and bring the fingertips to clasp right underneath and pull it up the rest of the way. I just look crooked when I'm doing this. And then stay here or take your left hand underneath your left shin and cross the left shin across your right thigh. Bring the palms to touch and sit down into this figure four squat. Let's inhale to lift and exhale to release the right leg and shake it out. Just noticing any sensations that you may be feeling and maybe offering a moment of appreciation for the fact that that worked in any capacity that it did. And then we'll take that on the right side. So planting your weight into your left foot. Let's kickstand the, uh, sorry, into your right foot. Let's kickstand the left foot at your ankle, shin or inner thigh. Arms are down by your side, palms face forward. Or you may lift the hands up towards the ceiling and grow your branches. And exhale to bring the hands down to the hips. Let's turn that right knee forward and pull it up towards the chest as hard as it'll go on its own, releasing the hands from the hips and interlacing the fingers in front of the shin and bringing the knee up towards the chest. And then if you'd like, taking the right hand underneath the right shin and crossing the right shin over, or the left shin over the right thigh, and then exhale into a figure four squat. Let's inhale to rise and exhale to release the foot and definitely shake it out. And from here, we'll work our way back down to the floor. So inhale, lifting your fingertips up towards the ceiling and exhale to fold forward. Inhale to halfway lift, <sighs> exhale to fold. From here, depending on where you are in space, you'll either walk your hands forward or walk your feet back for downward facing dog or a combination of both. <sighs> Let's take three rounds of breath and this downward facing dog.
And then when you're ready, slowly lower your knees down towards the mat, bringing the toes into touch and bringing the knees wide. Sending your hips back and your arms forward for child's pose. Three rounds of breath. At the bottom of your next exhale, walk your hands back towards your knees and then bring your knees over to one side so that you can um, make it down onto your bottom and then swing your feet in front of you. And we'll work our way down to the mat. So maybe bringing the backs of your hands behind your thighs and lower all the way down to the mat. From here, let's bring the left knee in towards the chest and then allow the right knee to follow. And pulling your knees in and allowing yourself to shift from right to left as you give your lower back a little massage. The next time your knees fall over towards the right, allow them to fall all the way over. And extend the arms out to the side, maybe turning your gaze over your left hand or your left arm as we take one final twist. I'll take one more round of breath on this side. And then when you're ready, let's swing the knees back up to center, maybe pulling them back in for a hug and shifting yourself from right to left. And the next time your knees go over towards the left, allow them to fall gently over towards the left hand side. Reopening your arms back up once again and peering over the right arm or the right hand. One more round of breath on this side. And then let's bring our knees back up through center. And as the clock is telling me that it's time to go, let's take any final movements that we'd like to take in order to complete today's practice. And that may be lifting your arms up through um, your open thighs or your knees and um, taking the big toe for happy baby and stillness or movement, or there may be other shapes that you'd like to take. Before lowering everything down to the mat, maybe stretching yourself in opposite directions for one big, long, final stretch as though someone is pulling you in one direction and someone else is pulling you in the other. And then relax everything down into the mat for a few moments of Shavasana, or if there's a different shape that you'd like to take, like a meditative seat, then I invite you to take that.
Let's take 10 more rounds of breath in the shape that you've chosen. Of course, if you have the time and you would like to stay where you are, I invite you to continue laying there and enjoying your rest. But if you're ready to move, let's bring some movement back into the body by maybe first wiggling the fingers and the toes. Maybe shaking the head from side to side or just giving your body whatever movements and transitions it's asking for before making its way back up to a seated shape. Let's just take a few more rounds of breath once you've arrived. And perhaps bringing palms to touch, maybe even allowing the head to lower and offering your self-appreciation for showing up on your mat this morning or this afternoon and giving yourself some of what your body, your energy, or whatever other parts of you have been craving. And maybe even setting an intention um, to just be mindful and appreciative of everything that you offer you as you navigate through the rest of the world today. Until we meet again, the light in me sees and honors the light in you. Thank you so much for sharing your time, energy, and practice with me. Namaste.